So I created this app that gets the trending topics from Google Trends, scrape relevant articles from different websites, and generate a summary for each one. This way we don't need to visit different sources of information to know what's happening. And on top of that, we can generate tweets about any trending topic using the sentiment and tone we choose. In this video, I'll show you how to create and run this app locally. And to achieve that, we will use quantized LLMs like the latest Llama 3.1 8 billion parameters model in a RAG pipeline designed to scrape news article efficiently and accurately for any given trending topic and generate a summary. Then we can add other features like the option to generate a tweet in any style we pick. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So first, to be able to run the Streamlit application on your machine, you need to create an environment with the following libraries. The main libraries we're using are Langchain with few extension packages like Langchain Community. And you also use DuckDuckGo search library that provides an API for the DuckDuckGo web searching engine. And as usual, you know that I like the Streamlit library, so we're going to use it to create the web application. And for the LLMs, we are using Olama, so make sure to install that as well. And you need also to verify that you can run Olama on your PC and that you have a compatible version of Torch with CUDA installed. I also believe that you can run the Jupyter Notebook on Google Colab. Now, I haven't tried that, but I know that you can run Olama on Google Colab and you can find multiple tutorials for that online. All right, so now we have the environment ready. We can start creating our application. So now you can see in this diagram, the first step is to get the Google Trends data from the website. Now there are several ways to go about doing that. And when I started working on this project, I created a Selenium web scraper. But then the Google Trends UI was updated and a whole bunch of things changed in the source code, rendering the scraper I created out of service. So instead of creating a new one, I chose a much simpler path that gets the job done, even though it has its own limitation. So let me show you that to have a better understanding. So here we can see that we have three options to get the Google Trends data, either as a CSV file, as a copy to the clipboard, or via the RSS feed. Now, if we click on the third option, we get an XML file containing the different information that we're looking for. So here we have a title, a description, and the different trends information under this item tag. So each item contains the available information for a single trending topic. We can get the approximated traffic, the published date, and the links for the news items. And by the way, this is the link for the daily trends. We also have another link for the uh, XML file for the real-time trends, meaning the trending topics on Google over the last four hours. And we can see that both files have the same structure. Now on the website, we can access more information and get more trends, but we cannot get those information from the RSS feed and we will need to build a web scraper for that. But for now, we can work with the information we get from those XML files. One last thing to note, in these URLs, you can see that we set the geolocation as US, and that's because we only need trending topics in English to be able to generate good quality summaries afterwards, but you can change that if you want. So to get the data in Python, we create this function, fetch and parse XML, we send a simple GET request to the predefined XML URLs and we get the response content. Then we use the XML to dict library to create a structured response containing all the information required. And then we can use pretty print to see what we got. So here we have the news items and if we scroll down, we can see the title and the publish date. All right, so the next step is to get these relevant information for each trend and create a pandas data frame out of it. To do that, we will create a dictionary for the Google Trends results and then create a data frame out of it. So we are going to loop over the trends and get the title, the approximated traffic and the published date and all the related news articles, URLs and titles. Then we get this data frame. I've encountered cases where single quotation mark in the trends keywords column are written as this HTML code. So I replace them with readable quotation marks. Now that's the only cleaning step I used, but you can add other ones to assure good quality data. All right, so now we have the data in a structured format. We can proceed to news article gathering for each trend. And for that, we will be using DuckDuckGo web search engine through the API provided by the DuckDuckGo search library. So for each trend, we send a request for the DuckDuckGo news API. 
using the trend title as search keywords and retrieve a maximum of 15 news articles. And we set the region as worldwide and the safe search as moderate. Then we need to filter out the articles that are from the skip domain list. That is a list that I created after a few trial and error iterations. So basically we will use scrapers provided by the Langchain community library. And for some reason there are domains that if we try to scrape using these scrapers, either we get an empty string or we get a message like please disable the ad blocker, so we're gonna skip these domains. Now that we have the clean list of news articles, we can create a dictionary for it containing the trend keywords used in the web search and the result obtained containing details for each news article retrieved. And then we append it to the final trends news list. And we can visualize the results by converting it to a data frame. So we took the first five results for each trend and we have the date, title, body, URL, image and source for each article. So these are the results from the DuckDuckGo web search. We need then to update the list of news articles and titles in the Google Trends data frame. All right, now the first part is done. We are going now to create a rag pipeline that for each trend, it scrapes the news articles, split their content, and create an indexed vector store to retrieve the most relevant parts, and use these chunks to generate a title and a summary for the trend. Now, why did I choose to use a rag pipeline to achieve the goal of generating a summary for each trending topic? Shouldn't we be able to achieve that by feeding the whole content of each news article to the large language model and generate a summary? Well, actually, we can do that if we have a predefined list of domains that we will use as a source of information. But because we're conducting a web search, and each time we may encounter a different source of information from different domains and different websites, where each website has its own uh, interface, then we cannot always perform an accurate scraping for the article content. So what we will do is to get the whole text available in the web page that we want to scrape, which will contain the article body and other texts that are irrelevant, like text from the menus from advertisements and other parts of the web page. And then we will perform similarity search based on the article's title to get the most relevant paragraphs from the scraped website body. And then we can proceed to the text generation step. So to do that, we need first to import a few more libraries. We need a web page scraper, so we import Selenium URL loader a structured URL loader and web based loader from Langchain community. We will also use the Langchain recursive text splitter, the face vector store with the hugging face embedding. And then for the generation step, we import the chat Olama class from the Langchain Olama library with a chat prompt template and the convert to OpenAI tool to generate a structured output. Now we need to use the chat Olama class, even though our application doesn't require that. However, to be able to get structured output from the LLM using the OpenAI compatible tool, it is indicated in the Langchain documentation that we need to use a chat model. And there are several chat models that we can use. I have only tried two, the Hugging Face chat model, but it did not work properly with the structured output tool. Nevertheless, we have other options that we can try, which are indicated in this table, that it supports a structured output. So anyways, let's continue with the code. We need first to instantiate the different models. We are using the all mini LM L6 V2 embedding model and the LAMA 3.1 8 billion model with 0.2 temperature and 1.03 repetition penalty. Then we create our chat prompt template. So we have a system message, then the human message where we will feed our article text. Since the task is a simple summarization task, then we can use a simple system message as follows. So we say you are a helpful assistant that specializes in article summarization. Your task is to summarize a given text article and generate a title for it. If the provided article doesn't contain coherent and meaningful content, just return an empty response. And then we prepare the f-string for the human message. Next, we create a class for the expected structured output. The class should inherit from the base model class from Pydantic v1 and we define the results field along with their types. After that, we convert it to an OpenAI tool and then bind it to the LLM. All right, now that we have the models needed, we need one more thing to be able to run the whole pipeline. We need few helper functions that will be used to scrape the articles, split them, and then clean the retrieved chunks and formulate them as a single paragraph. 
So the first function is URL loader, which will perform the scraping operation based on the type of scraper chosen, either using the unstructured library Selenium or the web-based loader that uses beautiful soup. So here we are using different types of scrapers because each option has its pros and cons. So briefly, the web-based loader is the fastest, but it cannot get the content that is loaded using JavaScript. So we cannot expect it to perform accurately very often. On the other hand, the unstructured loader option is slower, but it performs much better in most cases. And finally, the Selenium option, which is the best one, but unfortunately it's the slowest one. And given that we are performing the scraping for multiple news articles, the time consumption using Selenium can get out of hands. And one other issue I encountered using Selenium is that it has a problem of accumulating web driver processes, which increases the CPU usage drastically. So that's why we will not use the Selenium option, but we will see later how we will use this function in our pipeline. The next function is for performing a recursive splitting for the scraped text. And finally, we have the Retrieved Docs parser function, which will concatenate the retrieved chunks, remove the very short sentences, which usually doesn't provide useful information or context about the topic to the LLM. So I choose to keep only sentences with more than five words. And then we return the clean article text. But we need to convert this function to a runnable so that we can use it in a Langchain pipeline. And to do that, we use the runnable Lambda class from Langchain Core. Next, we will create two functions for the RAG pipeline. The first one will run the RAG pipeline once for the given trend and the second function will run the first function iteratively over all the trending topics. So the first function will take as input the trend keywords, the Google and DuckDuckGo data frames, the retrieved document parser runnable, the prompt template, and the LLM. We start by getting the current time so that we can track the execution time for each part of the rack process. The first thing to do is to get the list of article URLs for the past trend then for each URL, we first try scraping it using the web-based loader. But if the response is shorter than the predefined threshold, then it most likely mean that it wasn't scraped properly. So we need to use then the unstructured option. And here you can change it to use the Selenium option if you want to test it. I noticed in some cases that no matter what the scraping option we choose, the returned document object contains an empty page content. So to work around that, we will use for the articles that are obtained from the web search, the body provided by the DuckDuckGo data frame as a page content. And that's it for the scraping step. We compute the execution time and move on to the next step. So now we will create the vector store for the documents we obtained. So first, we split those documents into multiple chunks. Then we create our face vector store and create a similarity search retriever object that will be used in the rag chain to retrieve the top five similar documents. And then we calculate the execution time for this step and pass to the final step. Now we will create the rag chain. So first we create the query that will be passed to the chain, which is the titles of the news articles concatenated. And then we use the pipe operator to create a chain that starts with the face retriever. Then it passes the retrieved docs to the retrieved docs parser runnable. After that, we create the prompt template and pass it to the LLM to generate a structured response containing a title and a summary for the given trend. And to run this chain, we simply invoke it using the query we defined above. And finally, we calculate the execution time for the final step and we print it along the other steps durations. Now the second function takes the same inputs as the first one, except for the trend, of course. We start by creating the results dictionary then we get the list of trends keywords. Then we loop over the trends list. And if we have a non-empty list containing the article URLs for the current trend, we run the first function to perform the RAG pipeline. But if we don't have any article URL in the list for the current trend, we return a not enough information statement. And finally, we update the results dictionary. Now we can run it and see the results in the notebook. All right, that's great. Now I use this function to create a scraper class and a rag class 
that will be used in the Streamlit uh, web application. Now I have introduced few minor modifications for these functions using the Cation Decorator from Streamlit to make the web app run much faster. But the remaining code remains the same, so I won't do a walkthrough for that code because it will be repetitive. However, I added the option to generate a tweet, and as you can see here, the code to do that is in this tweet.py file. And it's a simple function that invokes a chain constituted of a prompt template and an LLM, where the template gets three variables, the context, the sentiment, and the tone. The context is the trend title and summary, and both the tone and sentiment are set by the user. Then we simply return the response from the large language model to be displayed. Alright, so that's it for this project video and see you in the next one.